All right. Okay, how's Good. the sign now? <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. All right. All right. So you can we, hear we got a little big for our britches here with right. this setup. We got, uh, we, got, we got a lot of technicians here working on it. But I'm trying to get really advanced with dual cameras, but now you're just going to look at my hands. Also, real quick. Oh, yeah. We should, we should show that. I mean, well, Joey, you're kind like of a medium sized hand. Like, yeah. yeah. That's it. No, the side, the, 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 pro, the profile. <laughs> right. There, this side. Go oh, side. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I get the point. Okay. Anyway, it's funny. I have big hands. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway. Um, so, back to the original question because it sounds like none of you can hear me. Again, I apologize for my terrible voice right now. I'm getting over a cold. Uh, the question was I'm going to talk with my hands here. Um, What's the compatibility like with the new capture system, essentially? So let me walk you through that. So the first thing to note is that all of your old plates, all of your standard plates, all of your dual plates, those are still going to be compatible with the new captures, all right? So those will all not right in there, just like they always have, no problem. Um, there's a big difference between the old standard plate and the new standard plate. And I'll hold this up here so you can kind of see, uh, basically see how far that one sticks out, and then this guy, the Z height is reduced quite a bit, which was one of the main goals of this design. Um, so everything sits a lot closer to you, there's less bending, more just of a straight pull down on your backpack strap, less things twisting. Um, so for that reason, this new standard plate won't work on old capture clips. So, yeah, I've got one here. So. What will happen is like the plate, if you put the plate alone in, it'll go in because the locking geometry is the same, but the camera will hit the other parts of capture. So like I'm hitting the thumb screws right now with the camera body and it won't go on. And that's because this plate is now sucked up a lot closer to the camera body. All right. So to recap that, old plates on new capture are great. No problem. New plates on old capture new standard plate won't work. Exception to that is the new dual plate. This guy is the same height as the pro plate always has been, uh, so this guy will wow, mount just fine into old clips. Um, then pro pad was the second part of that question. Um, so, thanks Pete. Get this out of the way a little bit. So old pro pad was obviously sized to fit old uh, capture there. Uh, new ProPad is, accordingly, size to fit new capture. Uh, could you put an old capture on a new Pro Plate? Yeah, you could. Um, it'll hang off the edges a little bit, though. So um, not not ideal. If you've got an old old Pro Plate or old capture, best to stick with our original ProPad that was released with that model. Uh, second part of that question is, can you put a new capture onto an old Pro Plate? Uh, I'll demo that for you. We really don't recommend it, in short. Um, and the reason is that this thing, you have to squeeze this top. I guess it's a little hard for you to see because it's all black. You, you just have to squeeze this thing too much to get, to get capture around. You can do it. I won't go all the way here. Um, in short, we designed these two products to work together. So if you're a ProPad user, I would highly recommend trying out the new ProPad with new capture. Did I cover it all? Cool. Yes, yeah, so. absolutely. All right. Absolutely. And 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 I, I just want to point out that uh, you know the goal the goal isn't to make people buy new products at all. We are always very mindful of backwards compatibility. And this is hilarious. Uh, I'm not copying this <laughs> real quick. But like the the goal is just to make the best product. And whenever we can be able to incorporate old functionality and make things work out for you guys, the customers. It's important to us, and it's a big design consideration for all of these things. Thank you. <laughs> uh, OK, cool. Um, just one real quick thing. Jeremy there, I see, asks, is, there, is the new capture wide enough to fit on backpack straps still? Uh, yes, absolutely. That is by far the, the biggest driver of the width of captures to still accommodate backpack straps. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make say a quick piece about that. Uh, my, this is kind of embarrassing, okay, here's V2, if you look at V1, it's actually the same width, the, the, the very same width, 
And for whatever reason, we didn't want to lose any width going from V1 to V2 because we thought, oh, that sounds like a feature reduction. Um, but the fact is that that was based on my very, very elementary junior, like I went to REI, I found this one Gregory backpack that had a three inch wide strap. And I said, well, it's gotta be three inches wide then. And at no point during V1 or V2 do we consider the fact that on those rare but super wide straps that actually exceed the width here, there's a great solution. All you have to do is very slightly create a bit of an indentation here. It's not even much of a challenge to pull off. Um, and so, I mean, that's really one of the, functionally, one of the primary upgrades that we have. I'm going to go to this really thick, gushy part of the strap here um, that, of course, you wouldn't really put a capture here, but you can see it's too wide. Just push it in there like that. Straps are pliable. It's a soft good. So it's really not a problem at all. And not having an overhang now on either side of your clip, for anyone that's really used capture throughout the years, one of the biggest drawbacks is that it's uncomfortable here or it's uncomfortable here. This product eliminates that. Even more so because we've got bolts now, which, <laughs> oh, I sound good. Um, oh, sorry, a little audio feedback there, guys. Uh, heads are gonna roll. <laughs> just, just kidding. Um, Anyway, but we, we, we've also been able to get rid of any of the ridges and the sharpness so that we've got this really smooth product now um, that I think is going to be much more enjoyable. I kind of in that same vein, I'm a guy who, uh, because it's kind of started everything, I put, I wake up in the morning and I wear a capture on my belt and I used to go to sleep at night with, you know, kind of a red mark right here. <laughs> Uh, every night. I just accepted that as the way things needed to be. Um, but that's not the case anymore. I wear this thing all day long and it literally doesn't bother me. Um, get, don't get handsy with me. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, I know you're lonely. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, the size of this thing is a huge, huge benefit. And every previous capture owner out there before, I'm sorry that we made this one so big, um, but uh, I really think that you're gonna like V3. Cool, thanks Pete. Cool, all right, next question. Question from Nick. Will the black anodized finish on the capture V3 scratch slash wear off as easily? Uh, by uh, Okay, so the question from Nick is, will the black anodized finish on Capture V3 scratch or wear off as easily? Uh, I'm assuming you mean as easily as version 2. Um, so this finish on version 2 is actually a paint. Uh, it's called an e-paint process or electro painting. Um, Capture V3 is now anodized aluminum, uh, which is a much more durable finish. Um, it's really not a coating, it's actually, a, it's called a conversion coating. It's more like, well, I won't get into the nerdy details, but basically it's stronger. Um, so the, if you've had a capture that's been used a lot, you'll notice that like this entry kind of shoulder up here really gets beaten up after a while and st you start to see the aluminum underneath, which is fine. You know, we, we design our products to age and wear with grace. Um, but uh, the new capture is stronger in that area, so you will see less uh, aluminum being revealed on that top area. Uh, what is different though, and what I wanna call your guys' attention to is on V2, we have this large area of machined aluminum. So that's actually machined after the whole thing is painted. Um, now on capture V3, uh, that's gone. So all of these functional surfaces are now anodized. Uh, what that means is that you will see wear on these kind of flat surfaces around the logo um, as the product ages. Um, and that's something that, uh, you know, is, is to be expected with any, any good that's going to see rough usage like this. If you're a light user, it'll look great for a long time. If you're a really heavy user, you will start to see some scratches and, and anodizing wearing off there gradually. Uh, but it in no way means that the part is uh, faulty or non-functional. Um, it's purely just developing a patina, if you will. Sweet. The next one from Tammy. On top of the call, was it 
to make having this new V3 system break compatibility with V2 clip in a ProPad. What's your thinking in regards to managing potential backlash from V2 customers? For example, I just bought Capture Lens a little over a month ago, and now it kind of sucks that having an extra clip that won't work with my new plates. Part of the allure was that everything was So, perfect. okay. Uh, that was uh, a, a really, this, I don't think there really is any backlash because you can buy just the clip. And when you buy just the clip, um, you, you're, you're paying for, so in, in the retail sense, I'm not talking about Kickstarter price here, but you have $50 plus $20 equals $70. You can buy just this by itself. You can buy all the parts by themselves. So I think that that backlash question is gonna be managed by the fact that everything is now a la carte. Um, and so for someone who just bought Capture Lens, they've got a clip and they've got a lens. If you want to get the new clip just for its slimmer function and lower profile, your Capture Lens still works just fine inside that. Um, and you only need to buy the clip, which I think is being sold for $40 on Kickstarter. So long story short is hopefully there is no backlash. We definitely tried to think about consumers in, the, in that sense. Yeah, and just to reiterate that, I mean, we really care about the money that you guys have spent on our goods, uh, you know, up to this date and hopefully in the future. We absolutely don't design things for obsolescence. We want you to be able to use these products as long as possible. Uh, whenever we do make a design decision, that means something in the past is going to be incompatible. For example, uh, let's take ProPad as an example. Yeah. Right. Right. So making capture narrower, uh, smaller, has so many benefits to everyone. Um, and to everyone's constant usage, like to not have this thing poking into your shoulders is just wonderful. I forget that it's on my backpack and I just leave it there for months. So making that decision to make that narrower made it a, you know, not ideal to put on an old pro pad. Uh, that's obviously a disadvantage. It's not something we take lightly. We definitely think about these things. Um, but there are cases when the advantages of a design change just far outweigh the costs of it. And, and that's an example. I also, I think that Max kind of, in my opinion, uh, I think he, he did the right thing. I, I know that Max would want you to upgrade everything, but like this works just fine. Like it really does. It, it, it pinches in there in the same way. And if that's your preference, uh, well, it's a little bit gummy, but you get, you get longer bolts with it. You can do that. It's not a problem. Um, the new one's just better. Okay. What else we got? Will there be any compatibility between Capture V2 plates and V3 plates? In other words, can I use a V2 and V3? We, 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 we covered we'll that. Yeah, yeah, we should be good on all the compatibility questions, I would think. Okay. Um, Just to reiterate, you can use all of your old plates with new Capture, and the new standard plate is not backwards compatible with old clips, and the new dual plate is backwards compatible with all clips. Yeah. That's got everything to do with the height. Thank you, Hansy. What's in store for 2018? Any hints? <laughs> All right. Nick. Well, Nick, let's see here. Um, I, don't, I don't have another camera for you, sorry. OK, <laughs> it's just this one. <laughs> well, there well, we go. <laughs> let's just get really I should have shaved. <laughs> I don't really do that. But uh, we can sit. Here, here's, here's what I'll, what I'll say. Uh, 2018 is going to see. But like I said at the beginning, uh, or during, during the video, um, it wasn't a whole lot of words, but this year was all about getting our house in order. We've hired quite a few more people. We're, we're uh, just north of 30 now. Um, and as you can see, we haven't come out with a ton of hugely new products. There's been a couple new colorways. The 5 year sling is awesome. It's really been about revamping the products that got us here so that we can then set forth on really new products that uh, warrant having, um, you know, double the square footage that we have and, and a design team of 12 people. Um, so I'm not going to hint too specifically at it, um, but just know that, that I have a lot of sleepless nights that are based in excitement. Um, I'm really, really pumped for 2018. Cool stuff coming up in, down the pike. Yeah. 
Victor, you look really excited right now. What's going on, bud? Uh, not too much. Oh, okay. Yes, looking real good over there. Check <laughs> <right side. laughs> yeah. You know, I'm actually most Speaking comfortable up. taking a knee anyway. Uh, I'd like to think I'm coachable. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of, Nick asks, can you introduce some mm -hmm. of the new employees? Oh, some of the new employees? Sure, there's Victor right there. Yeah, yeah. Let's see here. And take this guy off. How do you take no, you can't figure it out. I'm just coming. Yeah, out. actually, I would you love guys. to do that. That would make my that would make my day. Um, they can come off the, Why don't we uh, get everybody assembled around your feet? Yeah. Hey, everybody, come on over yeah, here, real quick. Yeah. Everyone in the office, I'm come gonna, over. Four get in. I'm gonna save this question for the last one. Huh? There we go. All right. All, right. All right, sweet. So this guy's Victor. Victor Mario. <laughs> yeah. That's the man. He did so our video. He, 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 he came over from the TV world and is the reason why we have far more professional video company, or pumping out uh, in all sorts of arenas. This, this is, is not a representation of that professional video. That <laughs> oh, that's right. That's absolutely correct. I'm not sure if his head is going to roll specifically, but uh, no, Victor's amazing. This is Mark. He's been with us for a long time. Uh, Old, old college buddy and uh, someone who's uh, made a huge difference in Peak Design, builds up our, really does, built up our whole website and our, our, our network architecture, and it's just totally self-taught. Y'all know Adam. He's been around. Like I said, Max, newest designer. Joey's been around for a while, too. Brian Buiger in the back, another Bay Area Badger. I uh, come on to us rather recently. Um, running our eBay stuff, keeping a, keeping a tidy house around here, and there's also our IT support. That's Jen. Uh, she's been here, here for five years. Uh, picked her up when she was still in college. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> we got Chris Mark here. Uh, he came on uh, as a web, web developer, a software developer. Um, he's working, working with Mark in, in tandem. Rob Jankura. Working on a project I can't tell you about, uh, but then, uh, he's also been here a long time. Originally designed lens clip, a uh, really big role in maglatch. Um, used to run mountain bikes for specialized engineering, uh, specialized bicycles, which is sweet. Uh, that's Heidi Kelcher. She's our general counsel and our head of HR. Um, Heidi uh, also went to the University of Wisconsin. Is from a dairy farm in Wisconsin. Um, <laughs> she grew up in milking cows, pretty much. Uh, that's Krista Hunter right there. Uh, she's uh, our, our we kind of call her director of engineering. She sort of manages the whole design team. Um, and uh, she, what's that? <laughs> Yeah, we should talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> should have given him note cards. Yeah. <laughs> I look like an asshole. All right, Tom James, uh, engineer, also working on stuff we can't talk about. Uh, pretty, pretty amazing dude. Uh, there's Rachel, one of our newest designers, uh, working on some other stuff we can't talk about right now as well. Just finished, uh, finished grad school. Annie Nywart, our head of community, um, runs our community. Um, Taylor Isaacson, uh, running Wholesale Ops. Uh, Peter Lockett, another longtime man, been here since he was employee number four or five or something like that. Uh, runs a lot of different shows. Art Vijay, looking like uh, he's pretty annoyed that we're still doing this, but uh, <laughs> that's what you look like right now. Like, yeah, I know, get the hook beat, I'm into it now. Uh, Lawrence, uh, our, our art director, uh, responsible for making Peak Design look really, really good. Mike's responsible for counting beans uh, alongside Dave Van Halt. Uh, that's, that's really deriding. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Uh, and Elizabeth Taylor heads up digital marketing. Uh, and then we got like Supriya, who's hiding behind there. There you go. Wholesale office. And there's actually considerably more people who are out of the office right now. Which uh, we did do, Adam. Yeah, I just didn't give a lot of fanfare. Oh, yeah, we got Casey. Hicks is in the UK. Wait, hold right on a second. It's probably worth noting a little bit that. That's very uh, true. So our number one customer and backer ever, Adam Hicks. If you've ever backed a Kickstarter project before, you know this guy. He is on the comment board. You've probably talked to him many times. Uh, we hired him. He's part of the Peak Design team now. There's no more charade. He is a Peak That's Design correct. team member, uh, and we're lucky to have him. So, uh, Hicksy, I'm sure you're listening to this. Love you, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. And we got Luke Roberts over in the UK as well. We got Ryan Doulon running wholesale up with Dan Kimienti and Jojo Stuke. Uh, is that it? 
Dave, Dave and Molly, that's right. Yeah, Dave, our CFO, uh, his wife Molly, our environmental designer, is designing our store, uh, which is opening in Hayes Valley. We got Brooks Fletcher. He might be running around here somewhere. He left. He left. No, he's here. Oh, yeah. right on. Uh, I got Dulo on and I got the whole wholesale team. Anyway, oh, like just Chad. naming names doesn't like make Chad. a difference. Chad doesn't work for us. <laughs> uh, nice, nice try, buddy. Um, that's the company. Okay. What else we got? Thanks, everybody. What would be the key differences between the new slide light and leash? And then sling five liter gear hole, mirrorless systems, Fuji. Sure. All right. He's going to get a leash. And then will V3 come with a plate? Which let's one just, is that? Let's just quickly cover like the major differences between the two products. Let's, let's do that. So we'll, we'll go slide and slide light, and then we'll go or, or slide versus old slide. I think that's important. It, it was slide light and leash. Was right, right. We'll, 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 we'll get to all those things. I think he's talking about uh, – there we go. Perfect. Um, so a uh, couple things. Here's, here's the old slide. So we have a product. Uh, that we advertise as you being able to say flip it to the grippy side this is ostensibly the grippy side which it is it's got got some grip on there and then use it as a strap but this is a problem uh, this has been a problem consistently for years and this is something that we desperately needed to correct because it's very difficult uh, to to suggest that you should have to break this in in order for it to work in the shoulder strap mode so a primary driver of the next iteration of slide was to get that right. And what we did uh, are two things. The, I cannot impress upon you how hard it was for Joey and others to get this grip right. And a lot of that has to do with just getting grip to stick onto this. And so what's going on, what the process that's finally been settled upon is two layers of different glues that go down first via silk screen and then slowly building up nine layers of silicone to give yourself a really, really durable, actually grippy surface that, hallelujah, can bend. Um, and a lot of that bend had to do with the fact that we have this pad now which has reliefs cut into it such that it doesn't impede its ability to bend. So this is one of the biggest updates on slide. We covered that slightly in the video, but I don't think it really got its due. Um, another key innovation that Joey really pushed for on slide is this. So not only uh, does having a sewn end on a doubler, which is the way that 99.9999% of these in the world work, um, it, so it, it adds a lot of bulk there, all right? It also adds an odd kind of transition when you go from one direction to the other. There's this little flipping thing that, that, that ends up occurring. Also, uh, you end up having a differential kind of slip on here. You're, you're, you're gaining your friction through webbing on webbing interaction. Joey, like, did you come up with this on your own? I've been thrown around in the office, but I figured it out. It's, uh, he, he did, he did, uh, but like I think more broadly, like this just isn't something that I have seen personally. I don't know what the source of inspiration of it is exactly, uh, but it's brilliant. So the webbing just dives right into the molded plastic part. Um, great in theory, uh, but not easy to do. Um, to get these things to finish really cleanly every time has taken an inordinate amount of time, effort, and energy um, to get perfect. So, Joey, I'm so pumped, man. Like, the, the cleanliness of this thing is just incredible. And what that ends up doing is making the core function of this product, which is called slide, which is meant to have no seams and allow this strap to slide across bodies, under straps, all of that sort of thing, smoothly. Um, it's actually a massive, massive improvement. The marketing guys just don't appreciate design. Sorry. <laughs> um, no, they do. Uh, but so the, these these innovations, I know, like they seem really small and they're difficult to get, you know, spend a lot of time on in the video. But I think they're really, really incredible, and they just put this in the class of products that Peak Design is making gear at at this point. Um, let's see here. Slide light and leash. 
Slide, light, and leash, sure. So what is the difference between slide, light, and leash? I'd say the, 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 the main difference between these two products now are, is the fact that slide, light has grip. You can flip this to the grippy side, and then you've got yourself a bona fide shoulder strap. Leash struggles uh, as a shoulder strap. And do I regret not putting uh, grip on that? I've definitely thought about it a little bit before. Um, and perhaps that's something we'll do in the future. Um, but regardless, this you know leash is, is more of a kind of your strap in a pinch and ultra minimalist. This is a super comfortable camera strap, um, especially for kind of the mirrorless class of cameras that functions very, very well um, as, a, uh, uh, as a shoulder strap, a neck strap, and uh, a slide sling strap. Um, obviously, also, you've got different pull mechanisms here. We, since since the, uh, the, the size of the strap isn't as much of a priority, we can, we can get away with somewhat larger mechanisms, whereas on leash, we wanted it to be as small as humanly possible. I think that sums up the changes there between those two. And then uh, sling five liter gear hold. Mirrorless Ooh. systems, including Fuji. I swing five liter behind you. Oh, look at that! On the wall. Yeah. Sure. And what was the question? Pistol launch. So. What is the hole? So, what is the hole? Uh, well, let's see here. We could certainly we could certainly start filling. We weren't kind of weren't were prepared for sling five liter questions. Uh, but that being said, we can get there pretty easily. Um, I've just got a couple of different mirrorless systems with me right now. Um, you know what, I, I, I can't imagine that we're going to be able to do this as efficiently as, as all of our collateral does on, uh, on the website, which has a lot of different setups of what this is. Um, so we cover that in pretty good depth um, in other areas. So I'm going to keep it to everydaysling5. Peakdesign.com slash everydaysling5. Sweet. Cool. Thanks, y'all. I own a Capture V2, and it easily damages Ooh, good. belts. How yeah. does the interior of the new Capture design, and will it have, how does it look? So the way that we achieved grip before was we did we, we took this. Yes, I am going to say torturous path, absolutely. Uh, we, we took this negative shape and this positive shape, and when you mash them together, it creates a multitude of torturous paths for any, uh, any strap to have to venture through. So what you're doing is you're, 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 you're like creating these break shapes, um, which are very, you know, they're, they're pretty good for getting something to stick, but they're also pretty good for uh, damaging things. This depends on good old fashioned friction. Uh, this is a... It's TPE, so it's a really grippy rubber-like material. That's right. Thermoplastic elastomer. elastomer. Gotcha. Cool. So that's how we achieve our, our, our grip there. Um, oh, and it's smooth, so that's why it doesn't damage it. <laughs> What's next? Um, capture lens. Will the new Pro Pad be available in black at some point? Uh, oh, I don't think so. I think at some point is always an interesting question because we can't predict you know, years down the line. Uh, right now, though, we're just releasing it in charcoal. Uh, with uh, thinking that all of our kind of belt accessories, belt soft goods, meaning our range pouches as well, uh, are all in this charcoal color. So everything looks like it's mm -hmm. a family. Yeah, a, a, a comment on that, I think, is that we're going to see, we're going to take a look at sales of our charcoal bags versus our black bags. We're really curious to see. Yeah, obviously, there's going to be some cannibalization there because they're a similar colorway. And if we see that the black is going to be considerably more popular than charcoal, well, that's a data point we're going to have to consider when we're making all sorts of products. Um, but I mean, we, we chose this because not only do we like it a lot, our surveys show really positive results for this being uh, one of the prime colorways. And one thing as uh, uh, one thing we don't want to do is over skew ourselves. Uh, create, creating too many products confuses people. And we're always trying to keep that to a minimum. I saw a few questions you could go into there mm -hmm. about consolidation of Capture and Capture Pro with our uh -huh. new one and making sure that there, some people are asking if there will be a Capture Pro after 
this release? Nope, there won't be. Uh, that The reason that we had Capture and Capture Pro in the first place had a lot to do with the fact that we used to be a one SKU kind of company. This is the only horse in town. And so we, you know, we felt it necessary to um, create two different price points, an $80 version and a $60 version. In truth, they weren't that different functionally. A little bit better materials, for sure. Um, a little bit different features. The other one had a metal back as opposed to a plastic back. But we've kind of said, we don't need to stand alone on capture anymore. We can definitely afford to <coughs> consolidate this SKU and just make it the best product that it should be. So that's why we've done that now. Did anyone else hear that from Max? Who else thinks I'm going to get sick now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I've been sick long enough. I'm oh, not sure. Anymore. Not yeah, yeah, no, no, no. The and, more flat, the better. Yeah. <laughs> so the other thing that, you know, another benefit to, to limiting SKU counts is it lets us run a really efficient team. Um, it lets us run really efficient manufacturing, and that's part of the reason why we can do things like this Capture Now is $10 less than the old Capture Pro was. Um, even though it's a new design, even though it's got better strength, stronger, you know, new materials. Um, so that's that's another benefit of us, like, really focusing in on products. Yeah. You got, okay. They want to talk to you a little about the different clamping bolts that you guys have included in V3. Okay. So I'll explain the different clamping bolts. By wearing a backpack. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> the two different types of clamping bolts. Let me just pull them off here. Um, two of them. So uh, standard thumb screws that you guys are all used to. Cosmetics are a little different. It's again a little bit lower profile, uh, but you should all be familiar with how to use these. Uh, your if you have capture tools, those will actually still fit on here. Um, the new bolts, these guys, are really low profile hex bolt, as you can see. They are obviously a lot smaller. Um, so the reason to do this is, well, there were a lot of reasons. Um, primarily it's for people like me who like to put a capture on one bag or one backpack and leave it there for a long time. So to me, there's not really... Uh, the, the thumb screw can just end up getting in the way. Um, and what these, these hex screws do is everything is now even, even smoother, even more low profile than it was before. So there's no sharp edges to catch yourself on, uh, I guess, other than the button, which is the one functional surface that you really need. I use Capture as a pillow now. <laughs> I don't know if I'd recommend that. but um, So then thumb screws are really more useful for, like, <laughs> That was good. <laughs> Stand by. Anyway, um, so uh, the normal thumb screws are great for you know the majority of users, or especially if you're taking things uh, on and off uh, frequently, especially if you're carrying on a belt, you'll want to stick with the normal thumb screws. Uh, hex screws. I encourage you guys to try these out if you're the type of person that leaves it on a bag for a long time. You'll see a lot of benefits. Uh, the other difference here is that we used to sell uh, for any of you with thick backpack straps. Um, you'll recognize that we used to sell long bolts. Um, what we've done now is basically made the height of these ever so subtly different. It's about a three millimeter difference in length of the bolt. Um, what that does is means that this guy cannot be used on a belt. It'll poke through the back um, for any normal belt, but no one's gonna hex wrench something to their belt anyway because you're taking that on and off frequently. Uh, what that gains though is that then this bolt that comes in the package, you don't have to pay any more for it, will fit on even the thickest backpacking straps, the, the, the big Gregory packs, thank you, I need water, um, that we've tested, right? So if you had a big backpack before, you'd buy Capture Pro for 70 bucks, and then you'd get it in the mail, and maybe it wouldn't fit your pack, and then you'd have to spend another $10 to get the long bolts. Now we're giving it to you 10 bucks cheaper, and we're throwing in these bolts for free. So uh, those were kind of the motivations around these, these hex bolts. Dope. All right, next question. Uh, you talking about the new POV plate? Okay. Yeah. Oh, new POV yeah. plate. Um, <laughs> should I go grab a prototype? Uh, we just grabbed a prototype. Uh, uh, oh, you've got it. Okay. Oh, okay. Adam wanted to just do that. Uh, yeah, thank that's, you. That's, that's, that was the real motivation. Yeah, correct. Uh, just to give your voice a break, you want me to sure, give this one go? go? Sweet. All right. So the deal was, you'll also notice that we, in order to round out this edge, 
um, and to remove a, a feature that was very, very underutilized, we got rid of the working mechanism um, in here that used to push a block over. Why don't I just show you? Uh, oh, these things are weird. Um, <laughs> there you go. Anyway, that's, that's the feature that we got rid of. So really the only remaining function of that was for POV kit, because obviously if you're using capture as your mounting platform, you need an entirely steady plate. Um, that is not something that you're gonna have. The, there's a little bit of play in here, which is necessary for entry and exit from the clip. So in order to, uh, in order to still make the product that you guys may already own, or the future product work, we had to come up with a solution. And the idea was to put the tightening mechanism actually on the plate. Now, it's gonna look a little better than this. Um, it's not gonna be 3, 3D printed nylon or, or store-bought nylon. Um, but what it's going to be is a mechanism here where we're gonna drive a wedge into the plate. And with just a little bit of force there, you get complete lockup. Um, so it's actually a considerably better solution, I think, um, and one that isn't gonna gum up your clip for all your other purposes. Now, for those of you who already own a POV kit, that uh, that that now want to buy new capture, obviously you don't want to render your render your product um, worthless. Um, we haven't. I guess we haven't. I guess we haven't decided <laughs> if we're if we're going to just give it uh, or not. Um, I think actually that is something that we're going to do. So basically, basically it's going to work like this. Uh, we can't predict. We have no way to like get a message out to all those who own POV kit. But if you own POV <laughs> kit and you're trying to use it with that, I mean, this certainly isn't everybody here. But if you dial us up and say, "Hey, Peak Design, my my POV kit doesn't work anymore. We're just going to drop one of these in the mail for you, um, free of charge. Uh, we want your products to again have the have lasting functionality so that they don't hit the trash bin. So um, we should probably so email. So have people start emailing. So yeah, yeah. I think I think best path there, guys, would be uh, just go to our website. Look at uh, Jen's going to hate me for this, but uh, <laughs> is customer right. service the best email to gather these on? I, I think so. Yeah. Hey, right, right, right. All right, I got this. We'll figure something out. <laughs> raise my hand We're going to take care of it for sure. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes, Adam. No, that's what I'm just okay. All right, all right. <laughs> Is the embedded grip on the V3 glued, or how does it help? I've had very similar grippy surfaces on products, and they just uh, break after a while. But uh, then again, they weren't designed by Peak Design. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you. That's flattering. Um, so it's held in place a couple of ways. Um, I guess I can try and rip this one apart for you here. Yeah. Um, so there, there is glue there on the back. Uh, there's also some posts. Uh, that hold it in place. I'm not sure if you can really see. Yep. Uh, the idea being that it's a bit of a, a belt and suspenders approach. Um, this whole thing is also sunken, so that it really doesn't protrude above the surface of the aluminum. So all of the force that this thing is gonna see is, is like this, right? It's just shearing. Uh, it's not trying to pull it out. Um, the only way that you can get this thing to come out is if you do what I just did, like get your fingernail in the corner there and then start ripping it out. So if you, you know, like picking at things, then absolutely you can pick this thing apart. Uh, I would suggest just gluing it back in if you do do that. Um, but under normal usage, this thing is not going anywhere. It's totally captured by the aluminum around it and the glue and the posts. Well, and the fact that when you're using the product, uh, you're compressing around something. So you're actually pressing it in there. Um, in, in, and so there's really no opportunity for it to jump out of there. So we're not, not worried about that being an issue. Agreed. There's a lot of questions circling around the RC2 Manfrotto. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Cool. Yeah. So the, our journey with RC2 has been kind of long. Uh, we had we had a multitude of dual plates in the early going, trying to get all the geometries correct, and then we had to switch. You know, I'm not even going to get into it. It was a mess for a long time, and we had the Pro Plate, which had these adapters. Um, this is this is the right solution finally, um, and actually. One thing that really allowed this to work out is the a la carte ordering. The fact that you can buy now just the clip and then just the plate and not be losing out on any money. This thing's 50 bucks. This thing's tw uh, 25 or 30? 25. 25 for Kickstarter. 25. Um, like it, it allows you to access it without any kind of 
uh, financial penalty. Um, and the fact that this is just one piece now um, makes it a much more solid product, product less finicky. Um, but as far as how it actually fits into both uh, capture and then into RC2 plates, it does function the same as uh, the existing pro plate with adapters. It's just a lot prettier. Right. So which plate comes with it? Do you get both or do you get one? Do you get... So you're, you're, you're ordering, if you want the dual plate, you order a la carte. You order just the clip, the $50, well, it's actually 40 on Kickstarter SKU, and then you order just the plate, which I think is $20 on Kickstarter. So a la carte, just the clip and then the plate. The one that comes with it, the one that we're calling the capture camera clip, is this plate here. So for Manfrotto users, you will buy this SKU. God, these packages are beautiful, Lawrence. Uh, you'll buy this skew right here, just the clip, and then the dual plate in its separate, um, in its separate compartment. Right. Oh, did we make a package for that? Yep. Sweet. We made, we yeah. made a package for that. <laughs> Phew. I think you answered this question. V3 work with current micro plate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Any and all the old plates fit in, including the V1 plate. And if you've got that one still, kudos. <laughs> Probably the best plate we made. <laughs> a question from Kevin. Will you be revamping clutch in the new V3 format? <laughs> in, in 2018, potentially. It's definitely on our roadmap. Um, it keeps getting pushed back by projects that we think are more important and interesting. Clutch is, 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 is doing pretty well. It's kind of this in-between child. Like, it's got mostly update aesthetics and, and function that we're mostly happy with. Um, I'd say that the the product that we think about more frequently, actually, is uh, what we refer to as micro clutch. Um, that really is a clutch that works, a hand strap that works much better for micro four thirds, well, for, for anything mirrorless. Um, so I'd say that, that probably has more priority. However, if we were to bring that product forth, we'd probably give a little touch up the clutch as well. But nothing, nothing really close at this point. Is there a more specific way to figure out if slide or slide light would be better for me, like size or weight specs for each of the cameras? So I mean, generally speaking, we say that you know, mirrorless, uh, go with slide light, and um, if you've got certainly full frame SLR, go with slide. But really think about it as yourself. Like, are you some, if you're someone who gets fatigued more easily or, or kind of has more strap pain. What, what, what a pad does is it simply distributes weight more efficiently. So if that's a priority for you, then do that. If it's not, then don't. It's really got so much more to do with the user than it does with any sort of specific, um, specific size requirements. Remember, you can use leash on a full frame setup, SLR. A lot of professional photographers do that. It's very much a personal preference. And it's just more middle least. Yeah. So uh, I think it was Vic who asked that question. The Canon 550D would pretty much fall under slide light for us. So that would be the strap we would recommend for a 550 because that's a smaller crop body SLR, especially if you're using a kit lens. But if you're using a big zoom or anything, then go up to a slide. Um, let's see. Dennis asked, can you post the maximum width of the strap uh, for that V3 can fit? I yep. think we have that in the it's, it's, yeah, and again, it's not about a maximum width because straps are pliable, or, com or compliant, rather. Um, so you'll be able to fold those in a little bit. Um, so there's really no sense in giving a, a max strap width. It's got more to do with strap volume. And I think you'd be very hard pressed to find a strap that, ha that has the volume that won't fit in to capture with the hex bolts. Yeah. Will there be a capture lens for the Micro Four Thirds here? <laughs> Along with Fuji mount, Fuji lens. You guys never stop asking. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, Jen does tell us that all the time. We do hear it a lot. The problem is that we we have to the, the size of those products um, has requires that we reconfigure the internal guts of this product, not just the exterior ring, and so it makes it not a very small task. And it's really all about opportunity costs. Um, I, I think that those of you who want a uh, who want that product uh, next year when you see what we are bringing forth, 
hopefully you'll say, okay, that was a better use of time. Yeah. And don't stop. You probably this. won't because you definitely <laughs> want to hear you. You want this product and I get that, but uh, that's, that's the decision that, that, that I've, that I've arrived at. Okay. I think that's the capture lines. Uh, we have some bad questions. Um, okay. Will there be an everyday backpack V2 coming down the line here? Are there going to be bigger bags? What's next? Uh, in part, so I will say that we're working on things that aren't just bags, um, but we're also working on more bags. Um, a V2 of the everyday line is not on the immediate roadmap. Um, because I think that the everyday line has a lot of legs yet. Like that, that thing needs needs more time to breathe, more time to run. Um, and there aren't, there isn't like a myriad of of changes that we would like to make. We've actually made small changes already to things like the messenger. Some of you have observed those, um, but I think that's got a quite quite a few more years. Um, I just say that we're paying attention to things like travel. Um, and we're paying attention to uh, the outdoor world as well. Um, but I'm not going to get into specifics about what we're going to bring forth in, in, 20, in 2018. Let's see. <clears throat> Is there a plan for people to trade in old Peak Design products now? Uh, fortunately, eBay uh, crushes it at that function. Um, we actually we did think about having a Peak Design Exchange on our website. We kind of fiddled with it, more than fiddled with it. Uh, I don't like that word, fiddled. Uh, but um, it just doesn't make sense. eBay is actually super efficient at that and far more international. Um, and so uh, we, Peak Design, use eBay. When we, get, when we get product that's been quite well returned, we have a grading system, and that's where we put it out. And it definitely goes. It's a great market for used Peak Design gear, which is awesome because it, uh, allows us to, you know, really stand more behind the fact that these products are, you know, I don't know whose lifetime, but that, that they're functional for a very long time. Any updates to the cuff? We just launched the cuff. Yeah, wow, it's pretty updated. The cuff is great. Yeah. Magnet that you move around like a Mentos uh, thing. <laughs> love to see a iteration of slide X, slide light, and slide slide XL. Ah. Um, uh, contact us. Um, I think that uh, the plan is, are we going to have customer service issued ones of those again? That's what we have right now. It's basically those who, those, those who write in um, who need a considerably longer strap, uh, we've got them available. Uh, just not, at, not on the website or anything like that, not on this Kickstarter, but um, we can ship those too. Okay, from Lawrence. Could God microwave a burrito so hot that he himself cannot eat it? Thanks. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I'm not going to venture to that <laughs> territory. Uh, I think it's possible. Possible. Yes, I think it's possible. As far as bone scratches go, that's a honey doodle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then uh, Mark wants a little bit of clear. Not me, but another Mark wants uh, a little bit more clarification on how the add-on. And the add-on prices for the pledge, just one more time. Yeah, um, I can handle this, but someone more I can handle this. Yeah, yeah, bring it on in, yeah. Adam. Yeah. Well, well, you can handle well. It. Handle it. I can handle it, Mark. Okay, I gotta put this down. Um, <laughs> so the reason that we have an add-on menu uh, is because Kickstarter has some kind of limitations over how you can sell stuff, right? And uh, and uh, it is weird. Yeah, it's it's unnerving. First time it really is. Um, long story short, we try to make a balance between having simple rewards and making it possible for everybody to get the exact set of things that they want. So our rewards are fairly simple. If you want to add something on, uh, we have a simple process for that. If you scroll down the page, there's a list called the Add-on menu, and it has all of the items that are in this Kickstarter as well as a bunch of other things that we've kickstarted in the past. Uh, each one of them has a, a dollar amount, and you can either create a new pledge or go manage your existing pledge and increase your pledge by that dollar amount. Uh, so you just kind of pick out what you want and add it all together. Uh, add Increase your pledge amount by that, 
and then you're good to go. When the project's over, uh, about a week or so after the project ends, we will send out a survey. And in that survey, uh, you'll go through and enter your shipping information, and then the survey will say, hey, looks like you added this much onto your reward. Uh, and, uh, and, and then you can basically select the products that you meant to add on in the first place. And that money will sort of, the, the credit will sort of decrease. And, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at all the shirts comments. Yep. Oh yeah, we got the same shirt. Crazy. I wore, it just I wore a t-shirt to work. The shirt? Yeah, well, no, you can get these right now. Shirts. You can get these right now. Speaking of stretch goals, this material that's a wonderful merino has a little bit of stretch to it. Uh, so so that, you can go from the slope to the boardroom. Slope to the boardroom. Right. I believe. <laughs> Um, so anyway, I hope that long-winded explanation of uh, add-ons was sufficient. It probably wasn't, in which case, check out the most recent Kickstarter update, because it did a much more concise job of explaining that. Yeah. Which I understood someone said was too tedious, and the CEO should save his babble for the end. <laughs> <laughs> and just so you know, it did hurt my feelings. My dad texted my dad, I got a text from my dad. Oh. And, he was like, and, and I thought it was coming from him. I was like, Jesus, dad. Like, That's harsh. We're trying here, you know? Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah. Anyways, these things cut deep. Go on. We're good. Okay. So we've answered the majority of the questions. We'll have another hangout. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. An hour already. I guess that's it. Uh, we're gonna have specifically about doing it after the pledge and whatnot. So there's a confusion about adding it when you pledge and adding it if you've already pledged. Oh, uh, so the difference between adding after you pledged is that you go back to the project page and you'll see a big green button that says "Manage My Reward," and you click that, and then you change the amount uh, of your pledge. Uh, in accordance with the prices on the add-on menu. Whereas if you want to add on when you first pledge, you just sort of make that math, you just math it out, I believe is the term. You just math it out right there at the beginning and then enter that into the pledge machine. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> it works it's super way. confusing and it's a, it's, it's a little bit obnoxious. There isn't a good mechanism for it. I credit you, Adam, though, for figuring out and figuring out a way that we can get people. Because it's the most common question we get is like, hey, I want to add up, which is sweet, uh, but we just got to use the, the infrastructure, which isn't really set up for like standard e-commerce. You can <laughs> not deal with it, and then it gets added on in backer kit. Uh, same effect. Uh, yep, that's right. That's right. Um, so we are going to have uh, a few more Hangouts, one tomorrow, right, mm -hmm. same time. Um, no, different times. I think tomorrow's is, uh, there's tomorrow's one of them that's going to be. Tomorrow's at 8 p.m. Tomorrow's at 8 p.m. Uh, that's largely so that we can make sure that we're, we're being covered across the globe. As you see these uh, lumberjacks ho. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just caught that out of the corner of my eye. Um, and then we're going to have another one on Thursday, again, at this hour. Um, you know, I can't imagine the topics are going to be that different. Like we, we covered a lot. We'll be wearing uh, different. You shoes. guys let us know what sort of pattern you want us in tomorrow, right? Yeah, today was plaid. <laughs> yeah, we'll Paisley. probably do a Hawaiian on Friday. Yeah, <laughs> Paisley is making a lot of Friday. Anyway, on Thursdays. But anyway, that's about it. That's about I it. think. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for hanging out, folks. See you guys tomorrow. See you tomorrow. And thanks for your support. We appreciate it. Bye bye. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>